Hi everyone. Today in Physics Lab, we're going to be exploring the conservation of energy and momentum through the process of a bounce. We're going to take a ball and bounce it off the floor. We'll be using the standard techniques of video analysis to study how the energy and momentum are changing through this collision of a ball just bouncing off the floor. For this lab, you will need a ball, really any ball that bounces will do. Ideally, it will be small enough that we can do a good video analysis on. Small rubber ball, here I'm using a tennis ball. Uh, you can use a basketball or a soccer ball if you need to, but you need a ball that you can bounce and measure the motion as it hits the floor and comes back up. You'll also need your phone to do video analysis and an object of known length so you can establish the distance scale of your measurements. Really, all we're trying to do in this lab is to use the techniques of video analysis and try some different approaches so that we get a sense of how uncertainties and errors can be used uh, in video analysis given the information we have coming in. We're going to have to study things a little bit differently because we'll be studying a collision with the floor, so we'll want to think about doing things like collecting data in slow motion mode using your video camera. More on that in a second. When you're setting up your video analysis, what you're going to want to do is get your camera down low close to the floor and then drop the ball filming it while it's actually hitting the ground. You don't need to see the top of your bounce. You can just release it and make sure that your camera is capturing the information when it's actually hitting the floor. Again, if you want to use information from slow motion mode in your camera, you can go ahead and collect the data in slow-mo. You, you will get better data if you do this, but it can also be a little harder to calibrate. You'll need to check your camera settings to see if you can figure out how many frames per second you're collecting data in. Here we go ahead and collect data filmed in slow motion. This requires some adjustment to the settings of our movie analysis in Logger Pro. The flickering that you see is actually the lights in the room being captured fast enough that you can see the flicker from the alternating current in the wall. Next, we insert the movie into Logger Pro. If we film the movie in slow motion, we will need to adjust the frame rate so that Logger Pro knows what time step to use in the analysis. To do this, you can right-click on the movie and select Movie Options, or go into the Options movie in the, in the Logger Pro menu. Here, I know that my frame rate is going to be 240 frames per second, which I determined from my phone's settings. I got that information from the camera settings on my phone. Here, I'm looking for Record Slow-Mo, which says it's recording at 720p resolution at 240 frames per second. You will have to check the settings on your phone to find out what the frames per second would be. Now returning to Logger Pro, we carry out our standard video analysis by setting up a known distance. Here I'm using the ruler uh, that I uh, included, and I know it's 61 centimeters long. I'm going to set up my axes in this system to be zero where the ball bounces, running vertically up and down. Uh, so that's about there. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, and then I'll go ahead and do my analysis by analyzing each frame of the ball. When we're done, we can see that the Y position of the ball, here in blue, shows a sharp V-shaped motion in the Y versus time graph corresponding to the bounce. This is what we want to analyze in our spreadsheet program. Our next step will be to analyze the data from Logger Pro in a spreadsheet program. So I can just paste in my data, but I don't actually want the x and y velocity columns. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete those columns because we won't be using them in our analysis. Uh, the time is the first column, x will be our second column, and y data, which is mostly what we care about, will be in our third column. And then here I've gone ahead and populated the table. This is really the core of the analysis of what we'll be doing and what you'll need to go ahead and submit for your E-class assignment. In doing so, I looked up that I dropped a tennis ball, uh, and I found out from just searching online that the typical mass of a tennis ball is about 58 grams. So that's 0, 0.58 grams. 
and I really don't know too much about the internet, so I'm going to give it a 5 gram uncertainty there. Here we're going to go ahead and pick places to do our analysis. The unit is the first thing we'll plug in, so the unit for the Y data that I'm looking at is just going to be given in meters, uh, given the Logger Pro analysis, and then I just pick some points here. So I'm going to say that my first Y point is going to be this one here in C5. And then my second one will be the one here in C6, so I just do that. Then my uh, third one I'm going to analyze after the bounce. It got off to a shaky start, so I'm going to pick uh, this one, C10, and then C11 as my fourth point. Uh, for my time, that's going to be values given in seconds in the first column, and then I just pick the corresponding points. Here I selected C5. So I want the time value in A5, uh, sorry, that's here. So I just go ahead and say equals A5. Uh, next one I can say A6. Uh, this point here for Y3, I picked C10. So I want A10 for the time and I want A11 for the next time. Uh, for my vertical height, I'm going to go ahead and find that in meters. That's the average of y1 and y2, so that's equal to y1 plus y2 over 2. And I'm going to make my table consistent, because if I want to change the data I'm using here, I just have to change the values at the top, and then the rest of the spreadsheet will update. Uh, similarly, I can figure out the final y as um, uh, I, as um, my two y values averaged, so uh, y3 plus y4 over 2. And I can do a similar treatment for my velocity, which is going to be in meters per second. So I'm going to say this is equal to uh, the y1 minus y2 divided by t1 minus t2. And if I do that, I get a value of minus 6 meters per second coming down. So that's uh, how I would calculate my velocities uh, and initial heights using the spreadsheet. And from here, I can go ahead and fill in the rest of the entries and also estimate uncertainties for these values and fill in this column. And that's the core of the assignment for what you'll need to do in this lab. That should give you what you need to know to get started in the lab. Feel free to post any questions you have to the forum. Good luck.